Hi everyone, welcome to episode 6 of the Digital Tourism Show Expert Series and today we'll have the pleasure of talking with tourism Tim Warren. Tim is the founder of Adventure Business Consultants. He also hosts the Travel Business Success radio podcast and Tourism Marketing TV and is also the author of an online course, Tourism Marketing Success. For almost 25 years, Tim and his team have helped thousands of private and public sector tourism professionals worldwide start grow and sell their business. And that's exactly what this show is all about. This episode will be about how to effectively sell your business. Now since 1994, Tourism Tim's mission is to guide, inspire and connect current and future tourism professionals to realise their dream. Tim, who lives in Simona country, in the wine country of Northern California, he combines his love for travel, adventure, business, marketing and giving back, creating for himself a rewarding tourism career. I'm sure he'll have a lot of stories to tell. Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of the Digital Tourism Show Expert Series. Uh, and today we have the pleasure of Tourism Tim Warren. Hi Tim, how are we? Outstanding. It's a beautiful day here in wine country, Northern California. Oh, it's a place I've never been. I would love to. I would love to visit at some point, but uh, it's, it's on my list. <laughs> and I do love wine, so, so I can't complain. <laughs> well, um, you've got you've, you've got a guide here that will take you around. I'm glad to host you. Perfect. Perfect. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. So, uh, for those who maybe are, are unfamiliar with yourself, Tim, do you want to please uh, give the users a little bit of insight to yourself and, and what you do? Sure, sure. Well, my my story goes back a, a ways. Uh, my when brother and I grew up in San Diego, uh, California, near the Baja, Mexico, and, and as teenagers, we loved the outdoors. We loved adventures. We loved surfing. And somehow we both had this affinity for flying. Um, we built um, hang gliders out of bamboo and plastic that flew, and we managed not to kill ourselves, which was really good. And um, my brother um, was pretty clear that he wanted to work for the airlines because he really had this passion for flying. And he started taking buddies of his down to San Diego, excuse me, to Baja, Mexico, uh, for surfing. And they'd land in these remote dirt strips out in the middle of nowhere, put up a safari camp, paddle out to perfect waves. And it was and, – and he – and uh, – it was just this great adventure. Before he knew it, he started getting calls from people he didn't even know and said, wow, my buddy Chris went surfing with you in Baja. Sounds awesome. How, how can I go? And my brother thought, can I get paid to do the two things I love most, surfing and flying in Mexico and adventure? And so in 1989, um, he founded a company called Baja Air Ventures, doing just that, flying surfers into remote places of Baja, Mexico. And I was helping him in the background with some of his marketing. And, and uh, uh, so fast forward a few years. Um, I started, um, we, we, his clients, which were mostly professional men said, we love that you can get us into Baja so quickly to these rural places. We, we and he had his own airplanes by then. Um, don't you have something for a non-surfing spouse or friend? Uh, about this time, adventure travel and ecotourism was really starting to take off in the early 90s. And we thought, wow, th this is we, we absolutely should listen to what our clients want and need and let's give it to them. Baja is the perfect place. So we ended up finding this um, defunct partnership on the Sea of Cortez. And they would built these funky little uh, palapa houses on this beach you could only get to by boat. And it was perfect. We took it over and started from scratch building this eco lodge uh, out in the middle of nowhere uh, in an area called the Midriff Island region. Um, and that slowly grew and I'm helping Kevin build this business and we don't have a lot of money and we're in a foreign country and we're in remote, remote <laughs> locations. And, um, uh, I started going to other, to conferences in the adventure travel and ecotourism world and, um, meeting people that were just like my brother. Um, maybe some of the list, the viewers can relate to this wearing way too many hats, um, missing all kinds of opportunities in sales and marketing operations, strategic planning. And this is what I've been doing for my brother. And, and meanwhile, in the mid-90s, this business was really taking off and it was starting to dominate our income flow over surfing. And I thought, you know, I really love this industry and I've helped my brother grow this business from nothing. Um, and now we've got something here. Maybe I can help these other people yeah. uh, who are just like my brother. Um, and uh, so that's what I did. In 1994, I launched Adventure Business Consultants, uh, working exclusively with the outdoor tourism industry, uh, helping small to medium-sized enterprises um, plan, start, and grow. 
Um, and now I'm involved with exit planning and, um, it's, it's been an amazing adventure. It has literally taken me all over the world. I've been, I've been a speaker at conferences at the adventure travel trade association. I was one of their assist, um, guest editors. Um, I've done work for, in Mongolia, Dominican Republic for the United States aid for international development, uh, month long trainings. Um, and, um, my passion really is helping what I notice about you know, your viewers and, and people that I've worked with is we're all doing this because we also share a passion for the outdoors, a sport, a region. And we, we really want to, wouldn't it be nice if we get paid well and, and have fun <laughs> doing what we love, right? Just like my brother. That's so, the ultimate um, goal, the ultimate dream. <laughs> that, that, that's right. So, um, but um, the reality, the harsh reality of, of actually starting and running a business uh, starts to creep in. But so my passion is helping people it's current and future tourism professionals realize their dreams doing what they love. And um, I've always said that um, it's, um, it's, it's hard to uh, – we're, we're in the quality of life business, but it's, enhance, it's hard to enhance quality of life when you can't pay your mortgage. So let's make some money. So that's just a brief snapshot of what I, how I got going and, and where, where I'm at today. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it sounds you've, you've, you've definitely been through from the, the initial beginnings of growing a business all the way through to planning and then and as you say, you're now taking that knowledge and, and helping others. Now, you, you mentioned at the, ed, uh, the end there, the, the exit strategy is now one of your focuses um, and to our viewers watching this, you know, normally the, the digital tourism show is all about growing your business and how to promote yourself online and through social media and how to build, how to build the perfect website, that type of thing. But we're we're going to this video is going to be a slightly different take on things, and it's how you, how you can exit, how you can sell your business. So, uh, so I suppose that uh, it leads into the sort of first question is um, why do you think that so many uh, tourism businesses um, struggle growing and, and getting off the ground and uh, and running their own tourism business? What is it the key element that they're missing at the planning stage that they should be thinking about? Mm -hmm. Well, we're we're um, we're going to come back to that connection you made about mm -hmm. uh, in a in a little bit later about um, most focused people. Most people are fo so focused on growing their business that mm -hmm. they're not thinking about the end, end result in mind. But the neat thing about growing your business and growing revenues and really ha really having more fun and making more money doing what mm -hmm. you love uh, is is um, they're they're synonymous. And you must you must. Um, uh, Learn how to make your business work for you. As I shared earlier about my brother, about oh, uh, why businesses struggle, and and um, I know this firsthand. I'm mm -hmm. still involved with my brother's business. I'm very involved. Uh, my consulting uh, takes the form of, of coaching and consulting to sometimes I'm on a project for years and I'm hands-on and I'm very engaged. But the bottom line is, is that the that most small businesses are wearing all the hats. They're trying to be the the salesperson, the marketing person, the the trip planner, the uh, the hiring and training staff. And wow. frank, frankly, most people um, uh, suck at their mm -hmm. at doing certain things. They either don't want to do it, they don't know how to do it, uh, they don't have time to do it, or all the above. Mm -hmm. And so what what happens is it creates this struggle. And and I hate to get these emails and calls, but it happens unfortunately. Too often, where people go, wow, you know, I, I had this, you know, I'm just doing this, I'm sea kike in, in Lake Titicaca in Bolivia, and this has always been my dream, and this is just an example. And, you know, I started this business, and now, you know, it's there's all this anguish that's coming in. Their dream is turning into a nightmare because they're 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 wearing too many hats and they're not really strategically thinking about working on the business and in the business. And so that the 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 synergy and the and the the similarity between growing your business and exiting are really the same. And I'm going to share some tips about how they support each other. Excellent. Later. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, just going back to one of the things you said there is uh, having too many hats. It's, it was one of the, uh, it's one of the reasons why I brought in a business coach for myself and my own business um, to help me determine the type of staff and the resources and things like that I wanted to to, to bring in or I needed to bring into the business so um, to me having a business coach was one of the best things I, I ever did uh, and I think every business should have a business coach personally it's, uh, to me it's one of the key aspects of it um, so yeah ha having so many hats on uh, it, it, stops you, it stops you from being focused on what you are good at and as my business coach always says if you're hiring someone hiring some hire someone that is better than you at doing whatever the task is uh, do, uh, that uh, up giving tasks, so um, I'm, I'm all for that, and I think that's that's a, it's a, it's a trap that all 
businesses, small and large, fall into. Um, maybe because it's budgets or time or whatever else, but they, they fall into that trap and they need to, before they think about growing their business too quickly, they need to bring these people in to allow them to then grow in the future and, and mm -hmm. ultimately hopefully sell. So, Really, really idea. good point. Have you ever heard um, Thomas Edison's definition of insanity? Uh, I, I have, but I can't remember off the top of my head. It, but it, yeah. it's, it's, it's brilliant because it, it speaks to this doing the same thing over is, is that people keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Yes. Um, and, th and this is, this is the paradox of, of a small business is because you get used to running it a certain way. And sometimes you can't see what you can't see. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what your point about having an outside perspective. Uh, it's important. And especially if you have someone who's really worked intimately in the industry, in that particular industry and knows well, the, the challenges and the pitfalls and the pain mm -hmm. uh, that can happen as well as solutions. So yeah, I, um, I people have said they they appreciate that I'm the uh, professor of harsh reality, and then I ask really deep questions to help people think about. Hmm, oh yeah, that's a good point. Maybe we should consider it a different thing. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a it's a. And what last point I want to make on this is that you're not alone, folks. The problems mm -hmm. that you challenge that that challenge you as well as what's what's working for you is universal. I've yeah. worked with the smallest businesses and the farthest, farthest reaches of the globe up to huge companies or even destinations. And the challenges and the problems are the same. You know, this is all about people. And yeah. um, so, and so and whatever challenges you have there, someone's probably already has a solution for it that's working better. So I, I really like to model best practices yeah. what others have already proven to be successful mm -hmm. makes sense makes sense and um, so say some of our users or some sorry some of our viewers are uh, in the process of thinking about selling their business or maybe this video spurred them on to actually you know maybe go down that that, that road um, the first thing that would normally come into their mind is is how they perceive the value of their business so what tips can you give in, in that aspect okay the um the you know, I know that many people, uh, and, and I'm learning this as I get more and more involved with the exit planning side of the businesses, and most of us are not thinking about the end result. But the, the reality is, folks, we're all going to exit someday. Yeah. And so um, why not do it on your terms? And, you know, that can include, you don't have to be selling your business. You could be passing it on to your family. You could be selling it to your management team. Um, you may want to even donate it and preserve a legacy of something that you some, that you that you started. Um, we have many many choices, but the um, uh, how I got involved with the, the and, and the how how people can determine the value of their business is well the, the, on my website. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, there's I got a couple free resources for you on my website, and I and um, I'm not sure when this show is going to come out, but I, I know on my services page on travelbusinesssuccess.com forward slash, I think, services. We'll, we'll put the actually, URL along the screen. So. <laughs> okay, cool. There is a free um, uh, uh, assessment. Of, uh, we'll provide you the value builder score. Um, what a, one of my, and, and I'll t the value builder score is um, something uh, Chris and I were talking about earlier. There's an author that we've both read, a guy named John Warlow, who wrote a best New York Times bestselling uh, book called Built to Sell. And one Fantastic. of my friends and, and mentors and now associates of my business, uh, he and his brothers uh, worked for four or five years on positioning their business to sell. And this was one of his his um, guidelines and, and how he structured his business. Well, and their six exit was so successful. Um, and when he when he heard that I was getting more and more people asking me about, wow, Tim, you've helped me grow my business. Now I'm thinking about, and I'm a little older now, I'm thinking about exiting, how, you know, how do I do this? Um, my friend Mike said, hey, read this book. I was so enamored with the book. I was so impressed with John, and, and, and he had a system that methodically helped people walk through the steps mm -hmm. to, to build value in their business. Um, I actually became a certified value builder with, for, um, for John Warlow. And um, one of the tools that he has, which is awesome, and um, I'm making available to you and your viewers for free, is this, this free value builder assessment. And, and not, not only will it give you an, a pretty accurate idea based on cash flow, growth rate, um, uh, the the uh, evaluation of your business. More importantly, it's going to help. It will give you a score on some of the what's called the eight key drivers of what makes a valuable business. And the cool thing about a valuable business, whether you want to ever sell it or not, many of the things are synonymous with also growing your revenues and growing your business. So it's a win-win. Mm -hmm.
No, yeah, I can completely agree. In, in, in that book, uh, I lead a, a lot of business books, and that is in my probably my top two. I absolutely love that book. It's 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 up there. It's uh, and I urge anyone to read it. It's fantastic. I'll put a, a link at the bottom as well to the website that you mentioned uh, there, and also a link to the where the people can buy that book because uh, I think it's a book that everyone should read. It's, it's a fantastic mm -hmm. book. Uh, Chris, can I add one more quick thing yeah, about evaluation? Mm -hmm. Because um, a lot of people don't really understand that that um, valuation and, and about a business, and, and you want to think in terms of um, if you were selling a car, you're selling a, 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 a house that you want to prep it so that the new buyer, the new buyer is looking for predictability. And um, there's two key things that drive value in a business. One is is cash flow and growth rates. And we're going to talk, give you some tips a little bit later about key things you should be doing to prepare yourself for this. But there's there's another thing called multiples, multiples of earnings. And, and um, you've heard in the stock exchange, they always talk about it's so many uh, times earnings is, is what the stock is worth. Well, it's the same thing for a private enterprise. And when you get these eight key drivers really flowing and really performing for you and you get a higher score, what that what they found in John Warlow, he's really, he's, he's kind of an engineer mm -hmm. in the brain. They studied 30,000 businesses and, and watched how they improved these eight key drivers. And what they found is that, that on average, when they improved these eight key drivers, they were getting 71% higher offers for their for their business. And so when you take cash flow and growth rate times, I, I, let's say going from a multiple of three times earnings to five, you could, you could be, and, and you're growing both uh, your revenues and growth rate and your multiples, you could double what you put in your pocket um, at the end of the day. So, you know, you like to book tours and, and, and get a good year. How about make, preparing for the biggest sale of your life? How about putting, working on putting the most money in your pocket ever? Yeah. No, so, that's, that's fantastic. That's a, that's a huge increase. That's a huge number. Um, so when I suppose businesses, if they are thinking of, of, of exit, uh, an exit strategy, when would you suggest is the best time to start doing that um, within the business? What's the best time to start planning uh, an exit strategy? Well, um, I'll, I'll tell you, the, I'll tell you the, the right answer, then I'll tell you what most of us do. <laughs> I, I think it was Stephen Covey that said, begin with the end result in mind, um, uh, which is really nice. And if we, when we started something, we already had an, an idea where we were going. But the reality, the truth, the sad reality, including myself, is I, we, we, we're often so focused on present and dealing with the stuff right in front of us. It's hard to vision a year, two, five, ten years down the road. So um, begin with the end result. Start really the best time is, is right now. Whether you, whether you never plan on selling or you're going to sell in, in 10 years, um, the average time that it takes to really get your act together and build that, that, that I'm going to use the analogy of selling a house and get the house, everything dialed in, the foundation clean, everything working, flowing, documenting. And run your business at the same time. I think you should really you should be planning a minimum of three years, um, because and if you do, but because if, if you do the work and you raise your value your value builder score, you absolutely will put not only put more money in your pocket, mm -hmm. but your business will be more more attractive to a buyer because they have choices. A lot of people. This is a lifestyle business we're in, folks, and there's a lot of people who've made gobs of money in other industries that they hated, and they thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool to be in the tourism industry someday? And ooh, I'd really love to get paid. To, <laughs> Go to Patagonia, right? And uh, but they and they think that oh, it's all fun and games, but we yeah. know better. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so you want to make sure that that your business is really dialed in. And um, uh, one of the, one of the uh, an example, if you um, want to see what a summary of how a, a, a tour business business is uh, positioned in the marketplace is I have a, a joint venture with a merger and acquisition uh, specialist and uh, we just listed a business in Alaska. And one of the things that you're going to need to be do, um, and if you look at this, this will actually help you visualize this on my website. Um, uh, and I'll send you this link because there's tour operator business for sale after travel business success. There's an executive summary of this Alaska tourism business. And you will see what are the key metrics that we are putting out to the public that are important that you um, uh, know what they are, 
work on growing them and stabilizing them and making them predictable. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, again, whether you ever sell your business or not, I promise you, your revenues will go up too because they are synonymous. Yeah, yeah, Uh, fantastic, fantastic. So in your mind, um, what are some of the key things that you can help tourism business owners uh, to do to increase their revenue and uh, the value of their business? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, along the lines of... um, the theme of your show and really w- w- primarily what I do is, is, you know, help businesses g- grow the revenues. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and because this will help with your business, it kind of falls into th- two different categories. One is cash flow and profits. You know, what, what can we do to increase, increase that predictability? Cause when, a, when someone's looking at your business, the most important thing they're looking for is predictability. How predictable will that cash flow and operations be in the future when you, the seller, are gone? Um, So um, under the cash flow and and profits, and I made a little list here, is is one – you know, what's what's the number one way people are finding uh, your tour business online? Mm -hmm. It's it's websites. It's the work that Chris Chris does, and you can you can have the the this, the the you can have the prettiest website in the world, but if people are coming to it and leaving very quickly and and not making inquiry, you lose. Exactly. So really, um, increasing um, sales conversions uh, primarily on your website, emails, uh, um, and in phone inquiries. At every step, these are what I call small hinges that swing big doors. This is where the revenue is made. So we really want to really focus on improving sales conversions and. And one of the the blessings that I've had working with so many different uh, operators all over the world is really studying what I call the the psychology of travel shoppers. What got them to choose? Because you guys know you have competitors. You have people who've got very similar offerings. And the consumer shopping. They're looking. They're, and why do they choose one operator over another? And so I've really studied the psychology of this and and um, and. And what are the elements that get them to choose one over the other? And it's actually pretty simple and pretty powerful. And um, uh, I put all of this into a, an online course called Tourism Marketing Success, which helps people go step by step to understand the psychology of the shoppers and how can they represent themselves in the way that will get someone to choose your business over an, a, another. Um, some other some other areas is um, referrals and repeat business. Um, word of mouth is, is absolutely yeah. the best That's form of That's why a lot of people fall flat when they don't chase that repeat business. And and there again, there mm-hmm. are systems and methodologies mm-hmm. that that um, are proven that work. And um, I've become much more of a numbers geek uh, in the last ten uh, years, uh, tracking s- tracking stats and really seeing what worked, what didn't, and and how do we go about asking for re- 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 um, repeats and re- and referrals and reviews. We all know that nothing is uh, that reviews are super influential, yeah. and, and and again, I've studied this uh, left and right, and I can tell you, that, uh, it's one of the last things people check for sure mm-hmm. um, is your reviews prior to when they got the credit card in their hand. They're just about to give someone money, and they're going to look at your reviews. And it's and the higher the value cost of your trip or experience or package, the more people will look at it. And mm-hmm. I'm used to selling anywhere from. Hundred dollar packages to something that costs twenty thousand dollars for six days. Um, so, um, but it's the same. People look reviews. So, increase reviews, referrals, and then the other part of it is is really helping the owners be um, have more fun and make more money. And that that falls into the category of being a better leader and manager. Yeah which is another hat that you've got to wear. It's like, oh, my God, I have staff now. And, oh, there's staff problems, staff issues. They're not engaged. They're not listening to me. Uh, well, imagine that, right? Um, it's pretty so, much like uh, having kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ex- exactly. You know, and, and uh, um, so, you know, it's, it's helping businesses uh, pe- move from working in the business to working on the business because you're going to be happier. Your staff's going to be happier. Your customers will be happier and you will end up, you will end up making more money. And, and a couple last things on the, this is, is strategic planning. Um, whether you're trying to, to roll out a new tour uh, create a new strategic alliance with with a vendor. Um, analyzing uh, wh- um, who you're going to be using for your online um, booking system, um, and and the last thing is, and one of your 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 last guests touched on this is the importance of customer service. Um, but uh, not only just externally to our mm-hmm. customers, but folks. 
internally. Yeah. If your if your staff is not treating each other with respect and are not happy and and engaged, how can you possibly expect mm-hmm. them to be of service to your to your external guests? No sense. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm a huge advocate. Of, of really looking at the foundational of the business we're in and really make sure that that the team and the owner and everything is functioning at different levels so that it ends up that, that you're making more money and having more fun. Yeah, I completely agree. And actually, I just had a, a chat with my business coach about this yesterday as well. And to grow a successful business in our minds, it's not about, uh, yes, cash flow, everything else is important. You know, numbers are very, very important. But to me, it's uh, if you want to have a successful business, it's all about the culture you, you, you build within that business. And that culture, and if, it, if you have a really good team and they're all, as you say, treating everyone well, they're treating clients well, that will then organically just grow naturally because people will come to get used to how you work and, and uh, you're, you're presenting a really good culture within the business and people will want to come and work, work for you, but also people want to come and uh, allow you to work for them uh, in terms of clients and things or customers, that type of thing. So, yeah, I'm a big believer of that. Culture to me is a very, very important part of it. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's a good point, Chris. Yeah, so uh, but I'll be interested to you, before I go into the next question, and um, it's something you, you just touched on at the start there, um, and I'll be interested to know your thoughts. And I know from the research that we have done, and, and purely with working with the client base, um, when it comes to customers interacting with websites, why they go away and stuff like that, it's... it's it's a trap where a lot of um, businesses fall on. They think by getting more customers, the first thing they do is normally is drop the price or have a special offer or that type of thing. Whereas from the research we've done, uh, price is actually quite low in people's um, decision making. Um, to me, uh, people will book a tour if, if the content that you have on the website, whether it be through really good written content, through video, really telling the stories, really showing the, your, your expertise, you know, showing the experiences that uh, someone can take, to me, that trumps price every single time, and and that's where the trap that people fall into. I don't know if that's what you found in your research, but I, I couldn't agree with you more, Chris. And and uh, what Chris just shared, folks, is is so important. You understand this on a, on a super deep level. I think when we, you and I were planning this meeting last week, we were talking about that, and I I shared some of this, this little bit of that psychology of of travel shoppers. It's really it comes down to trust. Whether you know people want to feel that they can trust their purchase decision. Am I making the right decision? We know they want to have a good time. We know that they want to do something that they're they're looking at and you may be one of it. So I I, I, I have this theory, this these uh, principles, I call the three principles of all travel shoppers. And, and it goes like this. Number one, they, they want to know that someone traveled before them, meaning that you have experience mm-hmm. and, and that uh, um, and they're, you didn't start last week. Two, those people had a good time Meaning you run great trips, and and three nobody died. Mm-hmm. Meaning safety is is, <laughs> is is a top concern. And if, you, if there are ways to communicate these, what I call the big three, very quickly, um, so that people will get that wow, there's value, there's quality. I'm going to be safe. I'm going to have a great time. Look at all these other people that 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 did it too. Um, this is really important, folks. Um, I've consistently. I love helping raise prices on, on uh, op- with operators, and I've done it so many times. And I think back 20 years to what we used to charge, to what we charge now, and our sales just keep going up. So um, because we keep reinforcing the big three, because we know that's the driver. That's what gets converts a travel shopper to a travel booking. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, it's it's key, folks. Don't don't get caught in the um, the price trap, especially some of the discount um, um, services out there that that are uh, that are lowballing your 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 trips because it's it's a it's a lose lose non sustainable business model. Oh, definitely. I've heard of so many horror stories of of people lowering their prices so much and they don't really consider the the commission that these places are taking and then the commission of maybe some of their suppliers are taking and before you know it you're probably losing more money than you're actually making so it's uh, I, I completely agree so um, if someone was thinking about starting the exit planning what would be the sort of an, uh, the, the initial options and steps that someone would take how, how did they get on board with that Okay. So one of the best ways to do it is, is reverse roles. Think about yourself. You are the buyer of this business. And, and um, you, maybe you don't know a lot about this particular region of this sport, but you, you, you're one of those people who've always wanted to get in tourism and, oh, it'd be so much fun. And it is. We, we understand, folks. This, is, this can be an 
awesome and is usually a great business. But you want to make your business as predictable as possible. So in order to do that, you need to, you need to um, uh, get your systems documented. How you how you run your tours, um, h- how your staff interrelate with each other. If there's a particular uh, protocol on how you d- you do things in, t- in in your office, what is your 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 uh, lead process to sales conversion process? You want to have it. Think think like a think like McDonald's. You think McDonald's doesn't have a system for everything they do? Mm. The more you can do that in your business, the the better. Um, so that's so the systematized two. Um, you want to have really, really good books. One of the first thing a, a, a buyer, potential buyer, is going to do is they're going to deep, dig deep, deep, deep into your financial records and books uh, because they don't want any surprises. Yeah. And so um, you need to keep really, really good books. Do not gather all your receipts in a box and give it to your your accountant at the end of the year. No, you'd be better off spending a little bit of money and and, and updating them every month. And actually, you should get your books audited. Uh, every year if you really want to have the optimal situation because um, again the buyer wants to feel that they're making a good decision they want to trust you the seller that you're the, what the information you're putting out is accurate reasonable and predictable um, track your what I call your KPIs key performance indicators and uh, Chris I imagine you guys help your clients with this but uh, you, you want to know um, how many people, where, where is your revenue coming from? What are your best sources of, of web traffic that convert into a booking? Uh, what's the highest value uh, 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 traffic that you're getting? And, and really, because for most of us, our website is our primary method of generating uh, leads and bookings. So you really want to have that dialed in. Um, I would also be working on, on your re, on your social media reviews. Uh, it puts you in a better position of power mm-hmm. because if you can say, "Wow, I'm in the top three in my marketplace for the for the tours or the or the ex- excursion or attraction that I am," um, that's a pretty powerful position because we know the, how influential that is. Um, and uh, the last thing is 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 the starting to train and cross train your key staff. Uh, one of the one of the problems that small businesses have is they become too reliant on key employees. And guess what, people? You know this. People leave, they quit, they get bad attitudes. Uh, uh, some, and you know, or what? But worse yet, what if it's you and you have you have knowledge of certain things and you're the only person who knows how to do it? You are hosed if you have yeah. have to step away from business for a few months. So work on starting to cross train. Key positions, um, you will be. You not only will your business run smoother and be safer, you will be happier because guess what? Then you can start delegating some of these things, and so that you're not working in the business, and you can really start working in the mm-hmm. bigger picture. Um, so those those would be some of the the, the key things. And and again, um, go look at that Alaska tour operator for sale. Um, it's a good model of of how. A business is positioned in the marketplace, and what and how how what would a buyer be looking for? So, reverse the roles again. Say, okay, I I want to show up well for this buyer. So it's it's no different than selling a tour, mm-hmm. but you're selling your business, and so you just really have to have your act together. Um, and there's a lot there's a lot that goes into this. Um, so if you need to start. Planning sooner and you know, and the sooner you can start putting this in place, the, the better off you're going to be. Whether you sell it or not, and you're going to make more money, folks. Yeah, guaranteed. Oh, well, you you made a couple of good points there. It's it's uh, and the first one in terms of of the website. From, from my experience, it's it's one of the things that people don't put enough time and effort and budget into. Um, they tend to it, it tends to be like an afterthought. You no, know, that they think of all the other aspects. And uh, I've I've had businesses who will spend uh, or clients sorry who will spend thousands and thousands of pounds and dollars on on uh, furniture for their new office and, and making it all look presentable, but then they'll maybe only spend a few hundred pounds on a website. And to me, the website is, I've, I've used the analogy in the past, well, to me, the website is the the best employee you will ever have. You no, know, it's it's working for you 24-7, it's selling for you 24-7, it never takes a sickie, it never, uh, well, never goes up, goes off uh, and, and joins another company, that type of thing to me. It's, that's, <laughs> that's, that is the, that is the, you should treat it as one of your best ever employees. Um, and then on the second point, um, uh, which was uh, highlighted in Built to Sell, if you really want to 
sell your business and if you're the business owner you really need to take yourself out of it as you say as if, if, if that business owner is wearing too many hats still within the business the evaluation of your business is just going to go down you'll, you'll pretty much not be able to sell it you really need to take yourself out of it and so in a, in a sense where the business can run on its own without you being present so that, that was that was one of the key things I took from that book and pretty much what you just mentioned there so if I could add one more key thing to what mm -hmm. you just said, Chris, and, I, and I, I, re, I really, on all the thing about the website, in addition to everything you said, and I couldn't agree with you more, it is it is absolutely, we talk about return on investment, when you do it right, it's going to make you a ton of money, mm -hmm. but also, it is a huge asset yes. um, that you can add to your business, and um, it's real estate. It's online real estate that you own, and it's a key component of being in this business. So you really want to invest in it, make sure it's solid, it's growing. And heck, why not? If you've got one good site that's producing for you, why not have a second? Why not have a third? I have four websites. Um, and um, it's it's because I recognize that there they are online real estate and mm -hmm. and, uh, and including also you know what are you doing in in your YouTube channel or you know this what you're doing to, to Chris or or um, my podcast mm -hmm. you know these are these are all online assets that support why this is a good solid business that's yeah. predictable it's going to continue to make me money yeah. and or make me money while I'm still owning it mm -hmm. so. That's why, that's why I'm a, a huge fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, he's, oh, yeah. yeah, so he, he he's he's literally a, a, as you know, he's a complete workhorse. But uh, he's basically <laughs> he basically says the only way you're going to build any business is to put as much good content out there as possible, and that's you know posting up on YouTube, posting up on Facebook, Instagram, and just getting out there as much as possible. And, and it's more of a a give situation, and eventually things will come back to you. It's it's like when we produce marketing for clients, it's like you know, produce help guides, produce you know, uh, content that helps your, helps, uh, your customers uh, and offers them value, not necessarily selling your products because that will allow them to then trust you and they'll keep coming back and keep coming back and eventually you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get bookings and revenue and off the back of that. But uh, marketing these days is more about never sells. It's more about give, 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 and then, mm. uh, you, 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 then, then you take at the end of it sort of thing. So uh, I'm a big believer of that. So. Indeed. Um, so, well, that's uh, that's all the questions I had. I don't know if you want to add anything else um, before we close, or. Um, well, on, on that note, um, this is the the point you just made is, is why Chris and I uh, do this. I mean, my my passion, I would say, if I was to look at myself, is my passion is I'm really a helper, and um, I. I love this industry we're in. I love that we get we that when we do our job well, these people like Chris and me and even and you behind the scenes, we're helping people enhance uh, have uh, incredible life experiences. Yeah. And so I love being in the quality of life business. I love working in the outdoors. I love travel, and 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 I love helping people um, realize their passion and really have a make a lot of money, have a lot of fun, and um, doing what the, what they love. Um, Along the lines of, of providing useful information, um, I would say some of the resources that I would um, recommend and, and align with what Krista said is I have a podcast uh, called Travel Business Success. You can find it on iTunes and in Stitcher and Google Play. Um, and it's, it's totally dedicated to you folks and providing useful, helpful information. I do a lot of case studies. There's some really good interviews with, with other tour operators and people and where they share their real-life struggles and as well as their, their wins. And uh, there's some pretty inspiring stories there of people who started with nothing and who now have a multiple seven-figure businesses and can take trips to Hawaii and, and, and are, real, are realizing the dream. So yeah. um, travel business success, um, I definitely recommend that. I have a ton of, of, uh, of uh, YouTube videos. Um, I look on YouTube for Tourism Tim Warren. Again, tons of useful information. Whether uh, you know whether you ever uh, buy my course or use any of my services, it doesn't matter. I want you to be successful. Um, and um, um, and if you want to, to get a hold of me, um, uh, there is a contact page on Travel Business Success. Mm -hmm. And my other website is, and this is my heritage, is Adventure Travel and Ecotourism, is Adventure biz biz success.com and you you can you can um see more about some of the services we offer from 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 uh, birth of a business to exit planning and actually selling of, of the business and so it's pretty exciting to be 
in the full circle of life with with this the business and the industry we're in, and uh, I I want to help people uh, uh, not only have a great time on the on the path, but then have that that final exit so they have uh, lots of cash and options to go play with the next part of their life. Yeah, I can't agree more, and it's, it's one of the reasons why I uh, I do this in my own agency focused on tourism. It's one of our, our, our very first clients was a, a, an adventure travel company um, they specialised in sort of walking and cycle tours, initially in Scotland, but they're now worldwide. But when they initially joined us, they, they only had like four or five staff. Uh, and uh, down now, what, 10 years down the line, they've now probably got about 70, 80 staff. Um, wow. They're making tens of millions of, of pounds. Um, and that's how they've grown, how I've seen them grow has been phenomenal. And it's Having a small part of that journey, it, it's so satisfying uh, to be able to sort of see where they've gone and, and taking their mm-hmm. business, etc. It, it, it gives me inspiration of where I want to take my business as well. So, um, so it's, it's uh, I can't I can't agree more. It's, it's the satisfaction you get with with helping other businesses grow and, and, and enhancing the, the business owners' lives, but also the customers that they're helping out as well to to take out the adventures and the experiences that they offer. So, yeah, I can't agree more. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's fun. So uh, I can't thank you enough, Tim. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, speaking with you and hearing your, your thoughts and ideas and, and knowledge. Um, throughout the video, obviously the links will be at the bottom. And the, the post, at the, uh, the text below this video, there will be other links, etc., to, to get a hold of Tim if you wish. Um, but uh, again, Tim, thank you very much and uh, an absolute pleasure. My honor, Chris. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate all the good work you're doing uh, helping our industry grow too. Thank you. No, no thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks again to Tim for taking the time. It was an absolute pleasure. Now, growing your business to sell is how you effectively grow your business to make money. It helps you focus on the aspects that will bring positive change to your business and to your bottom line. And I urge you to read this book, Built to Sell. It's hands down one of the best business books I have ever read. Also get in touch with Tim as he will help you achieve your goals and bring real value to your business. Until the next expert opinion, keep turning those lookers into bookers.